G'day Internet Legends and welcome to another clock bench video. Today, me and my little helper Bucky will be overclocking some older hardware and pairing it with a newer graphics card. You'll be hearing from Bucky shortly for his thoughts on the matter. He may not look it, but he's just as enthusiastic about computer hardware as I am. And I'll hand it over to Bucky for a few words. Hi, peeps. I like to sniff a lot of things and overclock with my best mate clock bench. Peace out. All right, let's have a look at what we got to work with today. Processor is the Intel i5 2500K. That was released in 2011. Four cores and four total threads, making this processor 12 years old. What a beast. Next up is the motherboard, which is the Gigabyte Z68X. UD3H B3. This motherboard came with a super old BIOS, uh, the F2, I believe, which took me about 30 minutes to update to the latest BIOS because with these old motherboards, you can't just download the latest one and install that. You have to do it in stages. I picked up most of the components for this build from Facebook Market Trade for a total of $50. I didn't even try to negotiate with the seller because, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, it came with 16 gig of RAM, motherboard, CPU, graphics card, and power supply. I didn't even try to negotiate, so it actually came with some pretty decent RAM, 16 gig of DDR3. 2133 megahertz. Uh, it's a bit of a mix, the G Skill and Kingston, which I'm definitely not complaining about, which was which came in a separate bag. The cooler we'll be using today on this build is going to be none other than the Noxure D15. Can't beat it, it's the best. And here we have it all crammed into my Silverstone case. Let's get into some quick and dirty speed overclocking. A bit like speed dating, but not. All right, let's load the BIOS default. CPU clock ratio, crank that straight to 50. I like to enable all the states of the CPU so it can dynamically change in the operating system. This can occasionally cause some instability issues, but Let's give it a go anyway. Who really cares about stability? <laughs> Let's mess about for a little bit longer. Checking some of the settings and whatnot. The goal here was just to get 5 gigahertz and why not? All right, let's have a look at some of the voltage settings, the multi-step load line and calibration. Crank that straight to 10. And we'll set our V-core to 1.55 volts. DRAM, give it a little bit of extra juice, 1.65 volts. And I think we're just about done here. Check a few other settings. Get rid of that full screen logo. Change the SATA mode to AHCI. Save and exit. Now let's see if it boots.
and there it is took its sweet time booting but we got there in the end still booting and there we are in Windows Time for Starfield. Let's jump straight into Starfield. Go for a little bit of a spritz around outside. And check our frame rates. Settings on Ultra 4K with 100% resolution scale and why the hell not this is a RX 7900 XTX 24 gigabyte graphics card so it should be able to handle that so CPU usage outside Let's turn that volume down a little bit. The game volume. Right, there we go. The CPU usage outside looks quite high, but um, I'm seeing nearly 100% usage on the graphics card and the processor. And the frames are hovering around 40 to 60. Okay, here we are inside and the frame rates are looking very solid and game running very smoothly. So. Processor and graphics card both at close to 100% a lot of the time. But it feels very work. smooth the artifacts and good. definitely playable. Around, we'll head over to Atlantis and have a run around there shortly. same way when I started too but it's not just that I want I'm going to be sticking go ahead just don't take too Here we are in the main area of Atlantis and this is where the bottleneck definitely shifts to the processor. The frames have dropped significantly but it's still not bad, not great. But if a 2500k is all you got then 2500k is all you got. And 
and a quick run around Guild Wars 2 before we wrap this video up. We're going to be running this at 4K with everything maxed out as usual. For the most part this game runs very smoothly and is very playable at maximum settings. So what have we learned today? Can you game on a 2500k in 2023? Yes. Would I recommend buying a 2500k for gaming in 2023? Definitely not. <laughs> 